Hi again then guys and welcome to the final car review of the 1.43 selection and this is arguably the only one of the five which you could make an argument doesn't necessarily just fall under the JDM category but also falls under just the general sports car category as well. And that was actually a point of interest for me as far as where I was going to put this in my playlists on the channel because in the past I featured the S2000 in Import Nights which is the playlist for the JDM cars of Gran Turismo. However, I think it's more of a sports car, really. So what we're going to do is leave that one from Gran Turismo 6 in that series, and to cover both bases, this one will be in Weekend Warriors, my sports car review playlist. But as far as the S2000 goes, regardless of whether or not you consider it just a sports car or a JDM car or both, what is not arguable is that it's very good. Just in real life, in games, across the board, it's very highly respected. It commonly comes up very high in customer satisfaction surveys. In fact, for a number of years, it was number one in the Top Gear customer satisfaction survey, like multiple years running, in fact. And it's a car which is built by a company who, let's just say, know what they're doing when it comes to performance, especially performance from a car which doesn't necessarily have or even need all the power in the world. And that is, of course, Honda, with the Integra, the S2000, uh, the Civic Type R, even a number of others through the years, both on the road and the track. Now, as far as this car's spec sheet goes, many things are fairly obvious, of course. Two-litre engine, the front engine, rear-wheel drive, manual gearbox. It's not overly heavy at 1,240 kilos, and compared to today's sports cars, that's even lighter than it was at the time compared to the opposition. You're looking at 242 horsepower and 160 pound feet of torque. So in effect, although it's certainly not on the same level as the NSX, it is a car which in many ways surpasses some of the best Type R models of the time. It's more powerful, for instance, than the Civic Type R, more powerful even than the Integra was, which has around 220 horsepower and even less in DC2 form. But of course, it is that interesting difference, once again placing it very firmly with the NSX rather than the Type Rs, in that it's not front wheel drive because of course it isn't. It's more of a pure sports car experience, and it's more of a European style car than many of the more JDM things that Honda has done. Now, as far as what this car can do, it's a fantastic tuning base. You don't need a huge amount of power to get great performance out of it, and although the S2000, contrary to what I'm saying, actually is probably not one of my favourite cars, I have a lot of respect for it, and I can certainly see why people like it so much, but for me it's not one of my absolute favourites or anything like that. However, it's a very good car, just objectively speaking, it offers you a lot to work with. It looks the part, sounds the part, the handling is fantastic, especially when tuned. And like I said, it's a very responsive car to tuning. Now, the particular S2000 that I'm using in this video was tuned, if I recall correctly, to N200 specifications. So basically stock power, in other words, but with dropped weight, of course, stiffened suspension, slightly better tires, sports softs instead of sports hards, all that kind of good stuff as far as tuning goes, and I was racing it, if I recall correctly, I think against either N400 or N500 cars. I think it was N400 that I was up against. Now, spoiler alert, I didn't win the event, but that's not always the goal with these review races, because it's just to give you an idea of how this can perform against cars which on paper should easily beat it, and sometimes they still do win, but not necessarily by as big a margin as that much extra power might suggest. And of course, many of these cars are not only more powerful, some of them are even similar when it comes to weight, stuff like Porsches, full-on super sports cars in some cases, that aren't exactly heavy anyway. So the fact that this car can even keep up with the pack, let alone basically move halfway up the grid or even higher, it shows the kind of raw potential that it has, even against the AI. Now, of course, if you reshuffle that grid into N200 to make it an even match, well, then the tables will turn. And, of course, if you checked out my N200 tune for the car, which is the exact same tune that I'm using in this video, you can feel the kind of ability that it does have in N200. Now, of course, you could tune it up if you wanted to. It has that kind of potential. It's a very good car. But across the board, I would say that this is, in a funny kind of way, kind of like the Subaru WRX or the Mitsubishi Evo of the sports car category. Because, in many ways, it goes against what a sports car would typically be and yet it pulls off being a sports car very well. And what I mean by that can be shown by a few examples. 
For instance, it's a Honda. Honda isn't typically a brand that many people would go to first for a sports car, and yet it's a very good one. The visuals, it's actually surprisingly sharp and boxy for a sports car. If you look at all of the individual design elements, the headlights are very angular, the grille is almost rectangular, even the car's curves are almost sharp and aggressive, and typically a sports car is, generally speaking, liked more if it's curvy. This is not a curvy car, and yet it looks great, and a lot of people like it. It's got a very aggressive, and yet somehow kind of feminine look to it. Not quite as much as something like a Z3, but it's a very pretty car, despite looking kind of like a snake at the front at the same time, so it appeals to both markets in that sense. But even as far as performance goes, it doesn't have this V8 engine, or even uh, a more conventional sports car unit that you might expect from something like this. It's got a pretty modest 2.0-litre 4-cylinder. And the reason why is, of course, with Honda behind it, that's all it needs. <laughs> it doesn't need some big crazy 400 horsepower V8 or even a 300 horsepower V6 or something like that. It certainly would be quicker, of course, in a straight line if it had those, but that's not what it's all about. It's about the overall package, about a car which can do everything you need and want a sports car to do, but at the same time, it's reliable, it's usable, it's not ridiculously priced and wasn't when it was new either. And across the board, I think it does a very good job of that, both in the game and in real life. So this is one of those sports cars where I would say it might not necessarily give you the kind of tail-happy, happy-go-lucky fun that you might have with something like a TVR or even a Porsche 911 or a Cayman or something like that, but what it does offer you is a fantastic base for track tuning. It makes an excellent circuit car. It does make a good drift car if you want it to be, but it's certainly not as prone to drifting as many other sports cars are, and it's just a reliable car. And those are the ways in which I consider it to be similar to the Subaru and the Mitsubishi. They're not necessarily the most flashy options around. In some ways they are, the hood scoop, the wing, but it's superficial stuff. The car itself is a four-door sedan that's just made to a very high standard with great performance. Performance that goes way beyond the numbers. And I would say, likewise with the S2000, it's a car which could easily be left behind in terms of how good it is compared to cars at the time, and especially as time moves on, and yet it's a car which can still run with the best of them. In N200 it's still fantastic, as I said with my circuit build for it. Put it up into N300, you might struggle a bit more against stuff like Porsches, but even then I suspect it can probably still punch well above its weight and power. So across the board, it's a great car. If you were looking forward to having the S2000 back, of course in its proper form, not the Amuse GT1 version, then you're not going to be disappointed. It looks good, sounds good, the handling is great, especially when tuned, as I said, and although the straight line performance is probably its only weaker point, especially when it comes to acceleration compared to others in the category, it's no slouch. I would say it makes up for that with its average speed through corners, in a similar way to some of the more JDM or pure JDM cars you could say from this update. But that's it for my thoughts on the S2000, of course I'd love to hear yours down below, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.